Welcome to English Country Life. As you can see, I'm surrounded by lots of hens, both our egg-laying hens and our broody hens with their chicks. And this week, we're going to be talking about integrating chicks into the flock. Welcome, my name's Fiona, and this is Cinnamon. And as you can see, we've got all of her chicks with me here. We're working with the brilliant podcasters, Chrissy and Holly, who are Coffee with the Chicken Ladies. And we are discussing how each part of Cinnamon season has actually progressed. This week, we've been introducing the broody hens and the chicks back into the flock. And as you can see, because Brie is on my uh, leg here, but I've also got a number of chicks on my other leg, integration is going very well. So let me take you through how we've gone about it. After the hatching, we keep a run attached to the coop. The chicks still need some time to find their feet and build up some speed. Speed is really important so the chicks can escape from trouble if they need to. Our usual timing is to release the broody hen and the chicks into the field the day after the chicks come out into the run. But in Cinnamon's case, we couldn't do that. In part four of this series, we saw that she had two late hatching chicks, so she had one more day in the run to give them some time to get up to speed. She then adopted four cream leg bar chicks after we sadly lost Halloumi, their brood hen. They hatched one day after the two late hatching chicks. They needed one day in the artificial brooder and a full day in the run with Cinnamon before we were happy to release them. So it was a full four days that Cinnamon spent in the run instead of 24 hours. Our first release is always in the late afternoon and we do that deliberately. Broody hens and chicks go into roost much earlier than other hens. And if there are any problems, it's only a short amount of time before the hens and the chicks go back into the coop anyway. Normally we don't have any issues and the first release was exactly that way. The next morning it was different and Will Cox, one of our cream leg bar hens, decided to try it on with cinnamon. I'd like to point out that no chicks were involved in this argument at all. This was two adult hens in isolation. It was a very short spat with no injuries, although I suspect Will Cox's pride was a little hurt. There were no other incidents with any other hens and I've been racking my brains why in previous years we've had not had any problems at all but this year we saw this argument. The only reason I can find is that it's only been two weeks since we lost our head of flock, a hen called Gannett and she had ruled the flock for eight years. Once the head of a flock leaves for whatever reason all existing pecking order places are up for grabs, and I suspect it was just Wilcox trying to move up the hierarchy. Once the chicks were out, we kept a close eye on them for the first few days, particularly the cream leg bars, who are the little grey striped chicks that you can see. They are two days younger than the Orpingtons, so there was a danger that they wouldn't keep up with them. But we were very glad when they proved us wrong. And of course, Cinnamon took exceptionally good care of them all. To begin with, Cinnamon keeps her distance from the other hens and broody hens in the flock. She navigates her chicks around the periphery, but never really gets very close. What you can see is typical, with both Frankie on the left and Cinnamon on the right with their chicks. They're in the same area, but with a good deal of space between them. As the days move on, all of the hens become more comfortable and confident around each other. None of the adult hens show any interest in the chicks other than curiosity, and it seems to be the hens keeping a beady eye on each other, whereas the chicks happily intermingle. Here you can see Cinnamon in the foreground and Rowan next to the omelette poppy pecking toy. It's difficult to tell whose the chicks are, except the little stripy cream leg bar having a snooze in the grass. She's clearly Cinnamon's. 
The most action we see now is Cinnamon posturing to signal to Rowan to move away simply because she wants her turn at the omelette poppy pecking toy. As you can see, Brie, one of our old English pheasant fowl, is very close to Cinnamon and she doesn't even acknowledge that she's there. After two days of being out in the field, this is typical and the flock has started to fully integrate again. We do take some simple safety precautions in the first few weeks. Here you can see Hazel outside of Cinnamon's coop and you might notice that access to the gap underneath the coop has been blocked by bricks. This is because tiny chicks will follow the sound of the broody hen when she goes in to roost at night. If they get confused and don't follow her through the door, they can run underneath the coop because the closer they can get to the sound of the brood hen is under the coop directly underneath the hen. It's possible that they stay there and then they can quickly become hypothermic. So closing up that gap, the chick will keep walking around the coop until they find the door if they missed it the first time around. For other coops, we use chicken wire because the coops are too high off the ground for bricks to block up the gap. This is Hazel's coop and you can see that the chicken wire here is very effective. The other precaution we take is with our treadle feeders. These normally work by the hen stepping on the treadle to open the lid, which gives the hen access to the food. But both the treadle and the lid could come down on a fragile chick, which can be very dangerous. So before the chicks are allowed out of the coop in the morning, we fix these feeders in a fully open position. As soon as the chicks' coops are closed at night, we then close the lids. That means we don't encourage any rodents into the area. The final part of flock integration is integration of the humans. We start hand feeding the chicks treats in the first few days. Our broody hens have all been taught that you and myself are a source of treats, as they've been hand fed from being chicks. So in turn, the hens teach their chicks that we have treats and so very quickly the chicks run to us. You might wonder why this is important, but it builds trust with our chickens and it means they're easy to handle. This way we can administer health checks or first aid without any drama. I do this every day and I love it. That's how we integrate our broody hens and chicks back into the flock and I hope that's given you some ideas of how you may want to go about it. The key is as much space as you can afford your hens, chicks and the rest of the flock so that they can navigate around each other rather than be together to begin with. But also be vigilant, keep an eye out. Just be aware of what's happening with the chicks and be aware of what's happening with the hens themselves. And if there's any concerns at all, please re-separate them again just to keep them safe. Now, if you have liked this content, please take a moment and hit the like button. I'm sorry, I'm having um, seeds demanded from me by Brie here. She's not getting any because Cinnamon's taking some, so I need to give that a little bit of attention. But if you have liked this content, take a moment and give me a thumbs up below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll hear of every new video as soon as it's published. If you've got a question for me or a comment, leave it in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you haven't listened to Chrissy and Holly's podcast, give them a listen. It's really good fun recording to, with them and a link to their podcast is in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, our branded t-shirts are available in our eBay store and a link to that is in the description below too. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.